Hi, everyone. It's Paul Miller of the Free Time Free Spill Podcast, and I'm with Yakim and Natasha Cole, and they're in New Zealand, and we're going to talk about relationships. I'm excited to talk about it. How y'all doing? We're, we're very good. We're actually in Malaysia. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. That's, that's cool. <laughs> I thought it was New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> no problem <laughs> uh, wow that's that's great so y'all y'all love traveling oh yeah that's how we ended up here i'm originally from switzerland yeah and and i'm canadian yes nice so like what are the most problems in relationships like that couples deal with like i i, mm-hmm. I could tell a lot but like uh like what are some of the problems they deal with all kinds of issues. <laughs> yeah. These are all kinds of issues. And there's different ways to answer the question. There's kind of the, the, the superficial answer, which is looking at the various issues that can come up, like uh, difference in sex drive, uh, difference in, in how they lifestyle and the work they do, the difference in, in how they deal with in-laws, um, how they see money, all of those kind of things, they can lead to, to various kinds of, of conflicts, right? So that is one, one way of, of, of looking at what couples are struggling with. But when you look actually a bit deeper, you're not just struggling with those kind of topics. You're also looking at that each person brings a history into uh, the relationship. And by history, I mean, I mean certain patterns of relating and being with someone. And you may have picked that up when you were young by, you know, coping with certain situations you may have picked it up by watching your parents and how they interact or by watching certain movies or hang out with certain people Uh, so we get shaped and those kind of ways of interacting they come into the relationship and some of them are not healthy Uh, and so that is another issue that can come up in a uh, relationship so there's there's different ways of looking at it and y'all help marriage couples too yeah, mostly we help people in long-term relationships, so marriages. But I guess it's because of marketing more than anything, because we could work with anyone. But we decided to focus on the women um, because, you know, if you were to talk to both, you know, men are kind of going through their own thing or, you know, so it's just clear to just like, you know, have one message. So we honed in on um, the wives And it's interesting because we're working with half of the relationship, right? And some people believe that you need both people on board for any real change to happen, but it's actually not true. And actually a lot of people find themselves in the situation where they're unhappy in the relationship, but their partner might not want to change or go to therapy or they don't might not agree with that so then you have one person who's who's you know not satisfied but they want to do something about it so we kind of like help women in in that kind of situation where their partner might not be on board for change but they desperately want change yeah the the guys can be like hard-hearted like i don't want help i i don't need it like i'm i don't want to be emotional (laughs) that's how they feed most of the time like they just like they want to be a man like yeah and that's part of the issue is is this kind of idea that what a man is and what it means to be a man and this disconnection from the emotions and not opening up to that that can be an issue and it's not just the men like a lot of people women are walking around as well with a guarded heart and so that's part of our work is helping people to unguard the heart because how are you going to help a healthy thriving relationship when you're coming and you're trying to be all protective it's not going to work in all the ways you're communicating is, is going to be twisted because it's coming from a place either from hurt or from a place of trying to guard yourself yeah the hurt like a, a lot of a lot of i know a lot of women like they like they they guard like they're they're the mothers they're they're the ones that that do the protection like like they they have a lot to guard like so like them being in like hurtful relationships it can it can really be like something that's uh the trigger Mm, yes yeah i mean a lot of women don't really come to us with this point in mind but i think you hit it on the nail in that over time, they, they realize that actually a lot of it has to do with like my self-worth. Like, do I feel worthy of my husband 
treating me better? Am I worthy of more of his attention? Because there's a lot of guilt involved. I think um, there's a lot of expectation that we should just like suck it up and be okay as long as things are fine. But deep down, we don't want a relationship that's just fine or that's just okay. A lot of times we want something more, yet we could feel bad asking for more or wanting more. Um, like it's almost as if like they don't feel justified to reach for something that's better than what they have. And at the end of the day, that really has to do with whether she feels like she's worthy of having that love and attention and affection. And I think that's that's a pretty big topic for a lot of women. I, I know a lot of women, they don't take the risk. Like they they put themselves on the back bar- burner or mm-hmm. like they put themselves last, like for, for their family. And mm-hmm. like they don't they don't invest in themselves or like go to school or do something to better their situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the man often, oftentimes the man will shine and, you know, do all the responsibilities with, with, um, when it comes to freedom with the freedom in the relationship. So, uh, the woman needs to shine too. And the, also the choice of partner, like when, when anyone that's starting off, like choosing the right partner, like that's important as well. Like not just choosing anyone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and it's funny that often we end up with someone who can, you know, hit those hurt and blind spots that we have. And, and you're like, man, how did I end up with this one? Uh, but they are also great learning opportunities. So yeah. just because you are with someone who uh, may not seem a, a, a good fit doesn't mean that they really aren't a, a good fit. Um, you, know, you always, of course, have to evaluate yourself whether that uh, makes sense or not. But you know, you're right in terms of, you know, the, the, the women shining, of course, you know, women uh, need to shine, men need to shine, both like that's what we actually want to help with mm-hmm. is that you as a couple are empowering each other, and you're helping to to live the best life that you can, like, as we say, uh, if you heal your heart, you transform your relationship. And when you transform your relationship, you revolutionize the planet, the world, human society, because the, the smallest building block of society is relationships. And when you make a change there about how you're relating, then it has an effect on how you're showing up at work. It has an effect of how you're raising your children. It has an effect how you're treating your friends. So it has a ripple effect through all kinds of areas in your life. And not only that, when you are empowered and you feel loved and you feel accepted and both of you really feel at home in the relationship, then you can use the energy that used to be tied up in conflict or nagging or bickering or criticizing. And you can actually use the energy to create the life that you want because having all of those conflicts and carrying them out in a dysfunctional way, which usually leads to more hurt, ties up the energy very strongly. And, and so when you stop doing that, uh, and you learn to relate to each other in a healthy way, suddenly you have all that energy. And that energy can then be put towards good use rather than um, towards destructive use. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I definitely think that we all need like healthy relationships, like wh- whether it's with our friends or like family or like our loved ones. And like, I see a lot of stuff in America, like it's, it's just chaotic, like all the violence and stuff, like energy, mm-hmm. all the violent energy. Uh, we need to love more. We need to yeah. have healthy relationships. I think some of it is subtle. I feel like the majority of us grew up in households holds that had some level of violence in it, even if it's not physical. Just how we speak to one another, how we see each other like the moment you see someone as useless or annoying or they should know better, you've kind of put them in a box and you frame them in a way where you're almost like superior, you know, like, you know, and they don't. And um, there was another interview that I had the other day and the host says something 
that kind of just like hit me. He said, sometimes we give the stranger on the street more respect than the person we go home to. And for me, I'm like, that's true. And that's mind blowing. Like what, what, what are we doing? And how are we being behind closed doors? You know, like these are the people we've chosen to love yet, you know, these are the situations where, you know, we get most emotionally riled up or we get irritated most quickly and we lose our patience and that kind of thing. Um, But I, I agree with you that there's a lot of work to be done actually. Yeah. Yeah, It it hits home. Like, cause I, I know like a lot of people are dealing with this, like how they, how they treat their spouse or like, like it hits home. Like I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm showing love. Like whether it's online or like at home. Like sometimes I gotta unplug from like social media. Then like I'm focused on like my life and my situation and environment. And then I'm able to like, you know, un- to ground myself and and know what's what, know what's going on in my life. Yeah, I, th- I think it's really vital to to do that. I think it's important to be mindful where you're putting your time and attention towards. Uh, a lot of things out there, uh, movies, books, the media itself, uh, the newspapers and stuff like that, the social media, there's a, a lot of negativity, uh, a lot of destructiveness in it. And I mean, when you look at the newspapers, uh, or, or just the news in general, what sells is drama, what sells is violence, what sells is this, oh my God, are we, is this out, I mean, this outrage. <laughs> and so you keep consuming those things, like it is going to have an impact on your life. And if you value love, if you love you, if you value peace, if you la- value empowerment, how is that actually reflected in your life? Are you actually spending time to nurture those qualities or is your time completely absorbed by watching the news and engaging in shows and other things that are just you know keeping the drama alive and perpetuating the violence like Mm -hmm. you can see and you can create a lot of leverage in your life by simply switching where you put your time and attention to Mm -hmm. and and i love to hear your your view on this too paul but i find that um with what we consume and we consume so much more than than a few years ago you know just when we hop on our to do our computer on our phone we're just like looking at stuff and we're watching shows probably more more than we have ever done before um but then all of those things have this very temporary and very instantaneous um almost like emotional um, effect on us Like we go on Facebook and people are posting their highest peaks, you know, they're with their family or they just had a baby or they just got a promotion or it's the best meal they've had that month. So they take take a photo of that or they're on vacation. It's like the highest, highest peak highlights. And then the same thing for when we look, watch movies or with headlines on the news or when we watch shows, you can feel it in your heart like uh, beat that it's like oh there's a cliffhanger and you're like you know your heart's beating and you're waiting for more and you know like you're responding like you're all these stories and all these experiences they're generating a certain adrenaline or response from you that's high you know you're always trying to get to that high again and again and again whether it's on your social media on your phone or it's some show that you're watching right but then that's artificial in a way and that's not really representative of like the real relationship that you're going to have the moment you switch your phone or your computer or your tv off you know like we can't live in this way where we're chasing those highs and we expect those peaks within our relationships And I think that a lot of people, that's what they end up doing because that's the expectation they end up having because that's what they start comparing themselves to. And before you know it, you, you have this unrealistic expectation within your relationship and no one can meet that. And not only that, 
like you said, sometimes you need to take time off to actually connect to yourself and figure out what you want and what you need and get grounded again. But if you don't do that, you're busy comparing your relationship with something that's, that's not real, you know? And, And I think for us, it's like trying to help people or these women realize that there's a there's a contentment, there's a fulfillment, there's a happiness that's beyond those peaks, you know, there's like a genuine, peaceful place that's not violent, that's healthy, that's empowering, that you can create within your home, within your relationship. And it has nothing to do with those peaks. It has nothing to do with you guys going on vacation suddenly or those peak moments where you celebrate. It's like the basis, you know, and, 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 we're trying to kind of rewrite that narrative because that's happiness um, when you stop chasing for those moments of pleasure. Yeah, me, me time is the best. Like I know like people love human connection, uh, just like podcasting. I feel like you, you meet some great people in podcasts and like it's, it's a good platform like to podcast. Mm-hmm. And like with human connection, like me, like that's that's what it is, like human connection. And like we have our peaks but also like sometimes we have like our downside like we gotta we gotta be able to experience that like to look within some people can't like they gotta be around groups of people like they look for other answers when the answers is within them like you don't always have to be around a group of people or asking them questions you can you can look for the answers yourself like you can google it you don't have to always like go to other people or like just for a sense of purpose <laughs> Sorry, you actually, you you said something very important besides the Google, (laughs) you can, (laughs) you can actually find the end, a lot of answers, not necessarily like practical stuff. Like how do I fix my sink? I go to Google for that or call the plumber, but there is a lot of wisdom inside of us that we are not tapping into. And you cannot tap into it. If you keep outsourcing to other people uh, around you to do it for you. There can be a guide which can help you with the process, but you still need to like be with yourself and to see how are you with yourself. Like we see a lot of issues in our partner. Well, the partner's at fault. He's doing that. She's doing that. If only they would change. It's like, well, just hold on a second. You're part of that dynamic. You're showing up in that relationship too, and you're shaping that relationship. So why don't you focus on what's going on within you? And here's the thing, like, if you are serious about this, just don't do anything for like half an hour. Okay, don't meditate. Don't don't check your phone. Don't read a book. Don't do daydreaming. Just don't do anything. And you'll see what happens. And and, and what happens is that you'll, you'll, you'll see some of those thoughts that come up and some of the inner demons that can come up. Well, that stuff that impacts your relationship, because that's hiding underneath and you want to look at that so you can resolve it you're not sitting there to torture yourself nor are they as bad as they they look like or the mind makes it to be but when you allow them to come up and they resolve you get to be in the relationship in a completely different way so it's very powerful to be with yourself Uh, sacred so like like when y'all talk to like couples or like like uh like wives that like need help with relationships like what are some things that y'all work on right so we we have a, a program called the cherished wife and the the idea of the program is that look people come with us with all kinds of issues they come to us with well we're fighting and i want to stop the fighting they're coming with well the attraction has been lost the spark is, is gone and a lot of those things, they are symptoms. It's like the, the tip of the iceberg. And so they see the, the thing that's not right. And they're like, if I can just change that one thing, then the relationship will be much better. And that one thing is kept up by all kinds of supporting structures. So, so we tend to just isolate it in our mind, but that's not right. <laughs> There's a lot of other things that are playing into that. And so we created this program because we were like, we want to give people a solid foundation like we want to give the women a solid foundation so that they can actually have the relationship of their dreams that's better than the honeymoon that's so deeply fulfilling and enriching that they wake up feeling like they're the luckiest girl on this planet or the luckiest wife Uh, but 
we can't just like go in and be like, okay, just fix this little thing. It's like, no, let's look at how are you relating to yourself? Like what happens within you? What is some of the things that you're trying to guard? Uh, how are you showing up towards your man? Um, how are you communicating with him? They're all the different building blocks in the relationship that we need to look at and unpack and sometimes show people a different way of relating because it's become normal to bicker. It's normal to complain. It's normal to criticize in long-term couples. And we're saying, well, it may be normal, but it's not healthy. Just because, you know, the vast majority of people around you are obese doesn't mean that obesity is suddenly the new healthy. It's not. It's unhealthy. And it's the same thing with those kind of relationship patterns. They are unhealthy and they're destructive. And so we want to replace those relationship patterns and give them ways that are actually empowering so that they can truly have why they're together with their partner in the first place. They're not together with the partner to fight them. <laughs> Yeah. They're together with the partner to love them and to share their life and to cherish the moment. That's why they're together. And so that's why we're like, we look at all the different pieces so that they have a solid foundation and that they can face future challenges, which come our way. That's very normal, but they know how to go about it. They're not lost anymore. They have a blueprint about how they can, you know, go into the relationship rather than be all lost and well hope I understand him. I hope he's going to change or I hope this is going to work out. Uh, communication is so important, man. Yeah. Communication, because you got that emotional connection. Like that's that's very powerful. Like emotional, the emotional body. Like yeah. when two like when two loved ones are connecting and like it's it's so easily to to like to go off track like when you when you're emotionally connected. And I think um, that's one of the things when it comes to conflict that uh, most couples get lost in. You know, the conflict or the arguments get out of control because they have lost connection. They start tackling the issue. They forget that they're a team and it just becomes this like tug of war of my way or your way. And they've lost a team in it completely. You know, their partner just becomes someone that they have to influence and convince and overpower in order to get their way. And that there's no connection in that. It's just, you know, an idea you have in your head and you're trying to just force it upon someone else. And a lot of people kind of think that, well, if that's not going to work, then I guess we'll have to settle just to compromise, you know, but compromising also isn't a way forward where you truly are connected to one another. You're just very much still connected on what you think is the right way. And they're thinking they're, they're still within their stance of what they think is right. And you're just meeting in the middle you haven't connected together to resolve it. You know, you haven't bound, bound together as a team to actually understand one another. You're still just forcefully finding that middle point, like that fence, like <laughs> you just have the fence now, you know, and you're like, okay, this is the center point. This is where I'm going to shuffle the snow until, you know, um, thinking of like examples with your neighbors, like, okay, that's, that, that, that's the part that I'll stop. Uh, when this when the snow comes I'm going to shuffle the snow on the sidewalk but we believe that you know you're right in that connect there's when it comes to communication it's not just about getting that outcome it's about are you able to find that connection even if there are like these overwhelming emotions involved like even the if the feelings are uncomfortable or you feel disappointed or sad or hurt, like, can you still be open to that? Or are you just trying to figure out that eject button, that thing you can do, so you resolve it as quickly as you can, you find some conclusion, some agreement to come to some compromise, so then it's over, you know, you don't have to deal with it. But from what we've seen by, from a lot of people, these agreements that people kind of 
get to after these arguments or fights, they still don't feel right. You know, they, because they still haven't connected to their partner. They're still struggling with the topic and they still don't recognize each other as people in their room. Yeah, my I had an ex. She cursed me out. Like I, I just, I just left her. Like she was cursing me out. Like all kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like I felt like it was hostile and like, cause I, I didn't talk to her for like most of the day. Like one time, like we, we didn't live together. But like I'll go visit her, and like it felt hostile and manipulative. Like in mm-hmm. financially and emotional unstable. Like so, I just, I just got out of it. We weren't together that long. I, I have a problem not holding on so long, like to like relationships. But it's it's more than physical. I think I think relationships are more than physical. Yeah. I think that's a really important part, uh, because especially when it comes to attraction, uh people are are focusing too much on on the physical, thinking all oh, attraction is physical. No, attraction is energetic. And, and there's a lot that can be done uh, to drop deeper into the relationship where the attraction goes beyond just, well, do you look pretty or not? So yeah, you're spot on that. It's more than physical. Emotional, spiritual, mental, it's all that, like just raising those vibrations, like, and connecting, connecting spiritually too. Yeah. 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 And I mean, all of those things requires you to open up like you can't grow together unless you choose to be vulnerable you know you choose to be seen and you choose to take on those challenges with your partner I think that a lot of um, couples get stuck because once they see an issue that they have you know just challenges that they face they start to question, they start to question the relationship and the compatibility and whether they should be there. And, you know, when, when really a lot of people, most of the cases is just, they lack the skills and understanding to, to make it through, you know, those challenges are normal, but a lot of times when people don't realize that there is a way to address it and to overcome it together, if they don't realize that it's easy to give up, it's easy to say that, okay, well, you know, it's, I guess we, we can't make it, you know, and that's a shame. We find, find that really a shame because a lot of people really truly still love their partners, but yet over time we have learned that in a way love is, isn't enough. Like you still got to learn the pieces that make up a relationship that make, that makes it last and makes it work. Yeah. It's a journey. Like we always learn this stuff on our, on our path. Like it's a journey. We all mm. ever learning. Like when you said uh, we got to open up, we got to open up. I relax more and like my heart open. Like when you say like we need to open up, like like in relationships and stuff like. And y'all, uh, y'all do for a child, too. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's Very a blessing. Sure we we, um, we have a girl coming maybe in how many weeks depends on her so maybe in a a month and a half or so i know y'all gonna be proud like parenthood is like a a joy yeah it'll be something we'll find out (laughs) 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 so what else y'all got coming up like y'all y'all got your own podcast too Yep, we have uh, the podcast has been launched a few weeks ago. It's called Awakened Wife. If people are interested, you can go to awakenedwife.com. And we are looking at, you know, the various issues that people are struggling with. Um, also, you know, we have the, the website, yourexceptionalrelationship.com, where we are writing about stuff. And if people are wondering, like, why are we covering certain topics? It's basically the topics that people are putting into Google. So, so that is what we, we are looking for. And, and people, you know, they, they, they put various things in and they're struggling with various things. And we're trying to, to help them along with uh, certain problems that, that they're having. Um, but I do have to say, you know, it, it's great to have all those uh, free resources. And 
knowing myself as well, you know, when I go into the free resources, they often aren't enough. Uh, like there's more to things to, to, to really go in and, and, and learn something. And especially in relationships, like we're not really taught how to relate in a healthy way. Relationships is just like, well, it's just something you do. You just, it just happens. But when you're going through this, this way, then a lot of things are coming from a reactive place rather than from a, a place of responding. And so the reactivity is, is, is not very healthy. A lot of the reactivity are learned patterns and you really want to make sure that you um, learn to respond in the way you actually want to. I just realized this. Mm. We never really talked about this, but I feel like if I look at the experiences, whether it's within the home growing up or within school, you know, having other kids around or sometimes even in a workplace, I think a lot of us come to the conclusion of how, how we should do relationships by finding the strategies that enabled us to survive mm. in the past, you know, like if it was an, quite unhealthy of a home you grew up in, you just survived. Like you came up with certain strategies and tactics to just survive in that moment. In school, same. You didn't have friends or, you know, there was a bully. You weren't learning healthy relationship strategies. Yeah. It was to freaking survive. And also the same thing in the workplace. You have a boss who is very controlling or, you know, colleagues and there's politics at work you're you're just surviving you know so i mean that's that's a that that really sucks because you know this whole time it worked for us we made it through we're alive and we're functioning in society but but we have this little backpack of all these survival mechanisms for relationships and not necessarily to thrive in them so i think because of that there's so much more that we can learn and then apply apply into a relationship so that we're not just merely surviving yeah you, you put the, the standard up higher instead of looking for surviving look for thriving that's what we're trying to do with your exceptional relationship that's why you called it exceptional relationship to to be like hey wait a second you can actually create a relationship that's really fantastic and great you don't have to settle for the so-called normal out there you can redefine how you want to have a relationship to be and that's possible but it has to you have to have the courage to say no to how other people are doing it and say well i'm going to find my own way and this is what i want to have but without that commitment you're not going to create it as we like to say an exceptional relation relationship takes an exceptional commitment yeah growing up like i didn't, I didn't have the best advice like about relationship like just the people around me like i, I know like like in high school or like teenagers, like they don't get the best advice. No. Yeah. So I, I thank y'all for joining me on this episode. Like it was, it was really a pleasure to talk to y'all about relationships. Like it's really good. Like, thank y'all. Wow. Aww. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Anything y'all want to us to add or like any links or I know y'all shared already, but y'all like to, uh, say something again about uh the relationship uh stuff that y'all got yeah sure there's a free quiz if anyone is um, interested in taking it uh it's it's pretty fun <laughs> like so you don't have to take it so seriously we just recommend that you do it honestly um but you can kind of figure out like we talked about this a little bit you know there are certain patterns that we find is so normal that it can actually be hurtful, whether to your partner or just in relationship in general. And sometimes we're very much blind to that, how we're coming across, the energy we're bringing, how we're speaking to one another. So if you kind of want to check in to see how your communication is and whether you make some pretty common mistakes that a lot of people do in relationships, uh, you can take the quiz at yourexceptionalrelationship.com and just forward slash understand. That's, that's cool. Y'all got anything for like couples, like, like, uh, like for the man and the woman, y'all got anything for them too? Oh, that, that applies for anyone, really. Yeah. Anyone in the relationship to check up on their communication, the quiz. Yeah. Relationships and communication is so important. Like, I, I thank y'all. Thanks.
All right.